Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode number four of the Columbus Marketing Show. I am Nate Riggs. I am your host. They have not fired me yet. Somebody ought to talk to somebody about that. But we had a great episode last week. Episode number three was with Ray Taylor, uh, who is an expert on not just marketing, but also sales. And we talked a lot about the alignment between marketing and sales and kind of what's needed to happen in the business arena. So you're going to want to go back and check out that episode with Ray Taylor. I would like to announce as well that Ray Taylor has come on as NR Media Group's Vice President of Inbound Sales Strategy. So we're very happy to welcome Ray to the team. For this week's show, we are changing gears. We are going to focus on market research and specifically market research in higher education the work these research institutions do and what that impact has on the business environment around them. We're also going to look at how campuses act as a research petri dish for millennials. Our guest today is Raj Agni Hortri, who is the chair of the Department of Marketing at Ohio University. Raj has been in the education sector for 14 years now and working at Oklahoma University, Kent State University, Townsend University, William Patterson University, and of course, the Bobcat Nation down at OU, uh, which I have a lot of affinity for. He has won a ton of honors and awards, and we don't have time to talk about all of them on the show, but they do include an Excellence in Teaching Award in 2014, a Bright Idea Award in 2012, and the Best Dissertation in Selling and Sales Management in 2010. Welcome to the studio, Rush. Thank you very much, Nate, for having me. It's well, thank, to be here. thank you so much for being a guest. Uh, I'd like to talk just a little bit about your background. So you started in the actual professional field of sales, yes. and then you moved into the academy. What caused you to make that transition? Interesting story. Um, actually, uh, by undergraduate education, I'm an electrical engineer, electronics specifically. Um, but I never considered myself um, as as inbound uh, kind of person. I always wanted to work in an interface of organization and marketplace. So after finishing engineering, I started, uh, actually I started from a startup company that was dot-com era. Um, okay. So uh, I started um, uh, selling things and worked in a jump around between sales and marketing, uh, mostly in tech area. I was um, and that, and then after a while, um, decided to come back to school, and that's when I uh, came to Oklahoma, actually, uh, to pursue my MBA, and uh, had no plans to get into the academia, to be honest with you. Uh, it was a very interesting story, in a very short form. Uh, I was um, working with the department chair over there, uh, Dr. Thomas Brown, and, and um, you know, sometimes things happen. You, you met someone as a mentor, and that person just shaped your life. So uh, there I am. After that, I never went back to um, industry, um, pursued my PhD, and here I am. Now, as part of that PhD, you wrote, you wrote this dissertation on marketing and sales, uh, and it became very, very popular. So tell me a little bit about the nature of that dissertation and your, your personal research. Exactly. Uh, so uh, my, my specifically, uh, my area of research was uh, competitive intelligence. Uh, so uh, we looked into this from, uh, from salesperson's point of view, from salesforce point of view, from marketing's point of view, uh, but it remained how organizations should adapt, modify, and shape its strategy based on competitive intelligence. Uh, we, we did many studies, but, but uh, one of the specific findings we, we got was uh, uh, it could be good and bad. <laughs> uh, in a long run, it can, it can hurt, actually, uh, your, uh, the way uh, your sales team, your, your boundary spanners, your service employees use this intelligence. Uh, to gain customers' trust. So some really cool findings we found, and actually, as you were mentioning at the beginning, um, it did win uh, American Marketing Association's uh, Best Dissertation Award that year. Uh, now I have branched out uh, uh, from competitive intelligence. Um, uh, I'm also focusing on social media and marketing and CRM technology and some other areas. Yeah. And you've, you've really expanded kind of your own uh, research interests by founding or being on the, the forefront of the Consumer Research Center down at Ohio University. Tell us just a little bit about what that is. That's correct. Uh, so uh, actually, um, it, it sparked in 2012 a very, very interesting story. Uh, um, ENY, Ernest & Young, uh, 2012 report came out, and I was going through and reading, um, and, and uh, they, I'll, I'll quote them, they used chameleon consumers. And I said, okay, what is that? I looked, started reading and said, uh, consumers, millennials especially, hard to read, hard to please. Um, and I went and I said, wow, that's, that's pretty interesting. I mean, I knew that millennials are going to guide uh, the marketplace. 
but but learning more about that, uh, it clicked. Why not uh, we do something about it? Uh, and and as you would know, Nate, um, Athens, Ohio is a you know a place to do those kind of research when dealing with 25,000. Uh, young consumers right outside. Yeah. Um, so, so we started working on it, got great support from Dean Hugh Shellman and um, hit the road. And uh, as we shaped this, uh, I'm telling you, and we'll talk later in the show about that, I guess, but um, as soon as we, we share this with any company, corporations, they just, their eyes lighten up, you know? <laughs> this yeah. is it, this is it, so. Well, we are going to be back with Raj and more on the Consumer Research Center at Ohio University right after these words. The Columbus Marketing Show is a production of NR Media Group. We change the way businesses understand and use digital media to connect with customers, earn their trust, and win their business for life. Learn more at nrmedia.biz. And we are back. Before we get into more on the Ohio University Consumer Research Center, we're going to take a moment to just do our little take on marketing insights. And today's report comes from the Higher Education Research and Development Survey, which is the primary source of information on research and development expenditures at U.S. colleges and universities. In their latest report, it was found that total higher education expenditures in 2012 exceeded that of $65 billion. That's a lot of money. But what's staggering is of that 65 billion, less than 1%, 0.67% to be exact, was put towards business-related research. So Raj, I wanna to toss that to you. Does this number surprise you in any way? Um, to be honest with you, it doesn't, because, because being in an academia for that long, um, uh, I know the, what the situation is <laughs> inside yeah. and out. Um, but, but does that make me um, a little bit uh, sad? I mean, yes, uh, to be honest with you. Um, and just to just to give you a brief uh, understanding of, of, of this scenario, Nate, uh, is that uh, the, the common perception is that business schools, business professor, business research uh, is primarily fueled by, by businesses, corporations, and, and the research is just primarily focused on how to serve um, businesses. Uh, and, 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 and I know some people uh, may get uh, angry on that, but, but I think uh, it goes beyond that. We shouldn't be looked at uh, uh, from that perspective, to be honest with you, because uh, if businesses are doing well, small businesses, big businesses doing well, there are more jobs, there are more opportunities. So, so at the end, uh, result would be win-win for everyone. Uh, so going back, but um, your point is that it's correct that businesses uh, and business research uh, doesn't get bigger pie from, from government help. So there's a lot of probably politics and process that go along with all the reasoning behind that. If you could change one thing in terms of how business schools and, and specifically around marketing education is funded, what would it be? To be honest with you, um, if we get more support and more help from, from uh, for example, business PhDs, right? I mean, you see, even Ohio University has uh, uh, PhDs in sciences and engineering, but nothing yeah. in, in business. So, so I think if we get more uh, government support, uh, because you, you would know, I mean, business PhDs and any PhD take time, you know, a lot of uh, investment and funding. Uh, but I, I don't think we are offering that many opportunities for uh, business professionals who want to pursue as a doctorate degree in business because very few programs out there in the nation, although uh, ASCSP, the accreditation board uh, for all the business schools in, in the world, uh, they cite uh, year after year that there is a clear shortage of business researchers, uh, huge shortage, even though business schools are growing. A lot of students want to do something because we can offer jobs, we can offer opportunities to undergraduate students, but there is a huge shortage uh, of, of skilled professional researchers in business area. It's interesting, but if you look at Ohio University in Athens, it is essentially this petri dish of 25,000 plus millennials. Talk to me a little bit about the environment in Athens in, in the bubble of Ohio University. That's right, and, and I think you stole my word. That's the key thing. It's, it's a bubble, you know? Um, uh, some people say it's middle of the nowhere, but that's the blessing because um, uh, what we say, our students work hard, uh, they play hard, you know, they, they're focused, they live there, they breathe there, they party there. Uh, but very high rigorous academic standards we maintain, so we have a, a very unique situation here, Nate. As you would know, majority of the campuses around the nation 
uh, are moving toward commuter online and all those other side of uh, uh, educational mainstreams. But I think we remain a classical campus type of setting. I think that sets apart. Uh, and of course, I'm biased towards it, but, but I think it's a fact. Anybody, nobody would, would, would counter that. So we got a uh, very strong, very diverse population also, you know, from all over the states, actually a uh, very strong international student body. Uh, too. Uh, so we got 20,000 plus, as you were mentioning, um, young uh, consumers, you can call it, or millennials, um, and, and um, we can do short-term studies, we can do longitudinal studies, we can learn from them, uh, but what we want to do in, in Consumer Research Center, uh, they will become uh, the driving force for this whole um, research plan that we have, uh, and, and they will become respondent as well as they become researchers. Uh, so I think it's a great opportunity for us to do something like that, and I'm surprised and amazed uh, uh, we haven't done it uh, earlier. Uh, but the overall goal is to, to make um, Central Ohio, uh, uh, this area, Ohio University, uh, as, 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 a, um, as a strong as you think about polling, you think about polling institute, right, Quinnipiac. You think about American Customer Satisfaction Index, you think about Michigan. Uh, you think about A.C. Nielsen Research, you think about Wisconsin. We want to set it up, Central Ohio and Ohio University, as whenever you think about millennials, young consumers, OU, Ohio University. And this is part of a bigger movement at the university as well, because you have the, you know, one of the longest standing centers, the, the Shea, Ralph and Lucy Shea Sales Center, there's the Entrepreneurial Center, and now the Consumer Research Center. Why this movement towards centers of excellence in, in the academy? A excellent point, uh, to be honest with you, and I would give a lot of credit to, to our leadership, especially Dean Hugh Sherman, uh, when, when he got on, and I was not there um, uh, when, when he started this whole uh, uh, approach uh, of centers of excellence. Ralph and Lucy Shea Sales Center, as you were mentioning, one of the pioneer in sales education. We are among the best in the nation, in the world, to be honest with you. We got entrepreneurship. Um, uh, Walter Leadership Center emerged. Um, uh, Professor Tim Reynolds uh, is running that. So, so I think what it does, so you got departments, right? You got academic standards maintaining by departments and academic research. And then you got a good mix of centers where you can bring practitioners. I'll talk about CRC, like what type of recruits we got and what kind of people we got to, to run those kind of centers. So it's a good mix. It provides, within College of Business, it provides a very good mix of practitioners as well as academicians to do certain things. And with uh, centers, you have a little bit more flexibility to, to do uh, certain things that, that you can do uh, in a departmental setting. Okay, so this is kind of a way to bring the professional aspects, the soft skills, as well as you know, real-time experience, what's out there changing, because we all know that the marketing industry has just flipped upside down in the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, with that, you've had to go out and recruit a lot of top-notch faculty to run these programs. Talk to us a little bit about who is you know, throwing their hat into the ring of Ohio University from a faculty perspective. Uh, that, that's right. I'll, I'll limit myself to marketing and sales, although we have recruited some, as I was mentioning, uh, Tim Reynolds. Uh, uh, we got it from Whirlpool and, and Tammy Reynolds and some other people, but I'll limit myself to sales and marketing. Uh, 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 so so in, within Consumer Research Center, uh, uh, when once we have this idea, once we conceive the idea, uh, we wanted to, to get some top-notch people uh, who are thought leaders in the area. Uh, we were successful uh, last summer to get uh, Tom Marquez, uh, um, uh, Senior Vice President of Bob Evans, who worked here and then moved to California side, but, but he was here in the past. Um, uh, another big uh, catch for us was uh, Dan Dolan. Um, I don't know if you know it or not, but, but Dan was instrumental uh, behind years ago, uh, where is the beef campaign? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're talking about real stuff. We're talking about people who have done it, people who have made name uh, in, in the area. Uh, uh, in the past, he was also senior vice president for AC Nelson in New York City, IAG. So, so we got those kind of people, uh, and now we are bringing top-notch scholars too. So we have a very good mix of doing things through Consumer Research Center, uh, and, and companies are uh, offering a lot of support. So these, these faculty additions are, are making a big difference from bringing the professional experience. How do the students then play a role in the, the Consumer Research Center? Are they doing the work or are they simply part of the study? Excellent point. I'm so glad you brought this up because, because that's, the, that's the philosophy is at College of Business. Everything should be uh, focused uh, for the uh, greater benefit of your students. You know? 
Um, so, so you think about Share Sales Center, right? It's all a student-run operations. Uh, very similar to that, uh, CRC is is run by student, is going to be uh, administered by uh, students. We are just uh, facilitators, <laughs> if you will mm -hmm. call it. Uh, so, what what the in a very brief sense, what the structure is going to look like, Nate? Uh, for example, this past week, we recruited our first batch of founding fellows, as we call it. Um, and these, the, we are offering a fellowship program. So students will come in and it will be internship kind of set up, you know. Seniors will uh, teach juniors. So this is the first batch we are bringing in um, uh, and they will get trained on all uh, sort of uh, uh, technology, softwares, research techniques. There will be weekly workshops. Uh, we are going to bring top-notch professionals to, to help professors uh, train them. And once they are on board and ready, uh, they will be doing research studies. They will be conducting. They will be presenting. So no, it's all about the students. They will be the driving force. We will be on the sideline as a coach. So these students will graduate not only with a marketing degree, but then also a certificate in market research that says they are accredited in understanding certain methodologies and applications of doing this research. I would assume with a number of hours tied to that that fellowship. Yeah. So we haven't we haven't gotten to that point that we have started offering uh, because it will take a longer process. We are, we are working towards that too. Uh, uh, but yes, they will be working on live projects. Uh, and, and just to throw in names, I mean, um, I mean, this is a great opportunity, as I was saying, saying. I mean, Central Ohio, you name it, like so many good brands right yeah. here, right? I mean, you talk of Victoria's Secret, ANF, Hollister, um, uh, Big Lots. I mean, you go to Northeast, it's Smuckers, mm -hmm. Alliance Data here. So, so, and, and they work very closely with, uh, uh, especially uh, we are exploring opportunities with the Smuckers, uh, Alliance Data we are talking to. So those kind of real companies, real projects. Uh, where our students are going to work on. So, so when they go out, as you were saying, uh, they will have the real industry-oriented applicable work on their resume, on their CV, and they will say, we are ready. We are ready to do anything. Okay. So with that, what are some of the companies that have kind of raised their head and said, you know, we're really interested in this, and can you give us any inside info in terms of, you know, the work that will be done through the Consumer Research Center for those brands? No, absolutely. And, and I think um, um, as, as we want to see it, uh, there will be different segments um, uh, because we, we got retail, we got hotel and hospitality industries uh, with Tom and Dan on board. Uh, we got advertising. Uh, Dan has a long history of, of success there. Uh, uh, and to be honest with you, so what we can do is uh, we can do product testings. We have behavioral labs uh, in our College of Business, Ohio University. Uh, we are planning to do a um, uh, focus group. We are going to do uh, survey designing. Uh, and all sort of things. For example, we are talking to smuckers, as I was mentioning, um, and, and there is a lot of room uh, to do so many different things as every organization try to tap into this millennials, elusive millennial generation, as you want to call it. Um, uh, so, so those sort of things we're going to do. Uh, for example, um, uh, if, if a restaurant chain, we, we're talking to Cameron Mitchell too, to be honest with you. Uh, so, so, so if they want to open a new restaurant or something like that, uh, they can work with our students. Um, uh, we'll do field study, marketing research, and then we'll propose a solution um, which they will be free to use or not. And all these projects are still uh, uh, under construction. We're talking about it. Uh, but I think um, we are willing to go with what corporations want us to do. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's another learning, right? Uh, that, that you have to have an idea. But more than that, if a, if a client comes to you, a corporate partner comes to you with a, a problem, you should have training, knowledge, skills, and ability to solve that problem. Yeah. Absolutely. You mentioned that the, the, the millennials are an elusive generation and, and albeit a target generation and segment for many, many brands out there. And yet they're also a generation that's in constant flux. Uh, author by the name of Jeff Fromm has a book out, a brand new book out called Millennials with Kids or Marketing to Millennials with Kids. So if you look at the millennial generation, obviously maybe there's expendable income. They're in that heavy buying mode right now. What happens when the millennial generation evolves, when they suddenly move on from colleges and universities to start families and kind of move into that next phase of life? How does that impact brands and, and what do they need to be looking at today? It impacts every aspect of businesses. It impacts everything, to be honest with you. Uh, so, so the way they, they buy, the way they work, um, uh, the way they uh, uh, consider work, uh, a workplace, 
uh, everything, everything has evolved, to be honest with you. Uh, actually, uh, very much related to that, uh, we, we recently collected data uh, from corporate partners to, to um, uh, how millennials, when they start workplace, uh, when they start in the workplace, uh, how they deal with the stress, you know, how, they, they, how you can excite them, how you can motivate them. Yeah. Even those mechanisms are different, you know. Uh, gone are those days when, when you have a pat in the back and you think it's, it's done, no? Uh, uh, this generation thinks differently. Uh, they act differently. Uh, so I think uh, how they purchase, how they buy, uh, everything is going to be changed. You know, it's a socially networked, uh, empowered consumers uh, we are dealing with here. Uh, so I think uh, it was going to change both sides, how organizations will promote their products to this generation, yeah. as well as uh, how this generation is going to react uh, to their promotional and marketing campaigns. Both things will change. We're going to be back to wrap up right after these messages. Cisco estimates that by 2018, video will represent 79% of all internet traffic. Take your marketing program to the next level by engineering video content libraries that are strategically designed to drive traffic, convert customers, and build lasting brand loyalty. Get a sneak peek of the Video Engineering Playbook, a new book by Nate Riggs. Download your free sample chapters by clicking this link. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have for today in terms of the Columbus Marketing Show. Our very special thanks to Dr. Raj Agnihotri. Uh, Raj, with the Consumer Research Center at Ohio University, if I'm a Columbus company, how do I get involved? What, what is the opportunity for, for my business down in Athens, Ohio? I think it's a great opportunity for, for uh, local companies as well as for, for students also. Uh, we want to, and that was the focus, to be honest with you, in the beginning, uh, with the with the so many brands out here uh, locally, you know, in Central Ohio. Uh, uh, if we can provide an experimental laboratory um, uh, in your backyard where you can do all sort of studies, it's it's a win-win situation, as I was mentioning in the beginning, for a corporation as well as for students. So what they can do, um, uh, they they can uh, uh, they can approach us uh, with a problem or they can approach us uh, uh, with just uh, a help, an exploratory situation uh, where they don't know what the problem is, but we can work with them to, to figure that out. Uh, uh, they can also participate in terms of uh, live projects. Like when I go and present uh, to companies, uh, last month I was in uh, Columbus downtown uh, presenting this idea to a local company, and I said, uh, well, consider it like this. Um, we all do marketing research, come on, and especially with uh, millennials, we, we want to do, um, um, we want to make sure that we are on the right track. So what we can do, consider as, uh, as, a, as a secondary information, consider as a, as a source of market uh, intelligence, you know? You can pursue your marketing research because, I mean, let's accept it, these are students, you know? Yeah. Uh, so they may not have that kind of um, uh, sophistication and rigor uh, that these companies are looking for, uh, but then again, they can bring those 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 uh, natural instincts also in, in, into this this uh, into this mix. Uh, so they can pursue their 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 projects and their marketing research work with uh, other companies. But add on to that, uh, you got in your backyard a great opportunity uh, where you can learn, um, um, and in the same way you can help. Our yeah. students also. So I would I would encourage them to to approach us. Well, it's truly a, a great opportunity for for Columbus businesses and anybody at Ohio really. You know, no matter the size of the corporation. And hats off to you and and the team down at Ohio University for for making it happen. Uh, make sure you come back next week. We're going to be talking with Jeanette Armbrust of Skyline Exhibits of Central Ohio about marketing and trade shows. You're not going to want to miss that. I know that we're getting into trade show season, so that's a very timely episode coming up. The Columbus Marketing Show is a production of NR Media Group. It is recorded in our studios each week at 454 East Main Street in downtown Columbus. Feel free to come and give us a visit. As a quick reminder, we are facilitating the first Columbus HubSpot user group meeting. That is going to take place here at the studio on Wednesday, January 28th from 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. We will be having cat singers for everybody who attends. So even if you just come for the sandwich, show up and we'll, we'll have a good time. Uh, we're going to be taking a deep dive into HubSpot's new CRM tool. You can also watch the show on YouTube, NR Media Group YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash NR Media Group. And there's a variety of different episodes there. Catch the show's notes. If you're looking for the play-by-play -play notes on the show, you can find that on NR Media 
media.biz forward slash blog, and those notes will be published each week. Special thanks to the NR Media Group production crew. Nate Marshall is the production director. Uh, Alex Foley is the content manager and on cameras, and Melissa Christian handles our show logistics. And as always, I am your host, Nate Riggs, and I will see you back here next week for another Columbus Marketing Show. Thank you.